Hey everyone, Elite here. Thank you for joining me to another or in another color exploration and you voted for turquoise. So your wish is my command once again and I want to share with you the turquoises that I currently have in my palette and also show you similar versions. You absolutely don't need to buy the ones that I have. In some cases, it's simply kind of going through my stash and using whatever is just next <laughs> in the lineup because a lot of them are quite similar. So currently in my palette, I have three and a half, like I recently added a little bit of this color, which I mean with these two, some might even say these are almost blue, but to me they still fall in the turquoise zone. And uh, I have so many other blues <laughs> that if I did, or when I do another uh, video about the blues, uh, I have enough there. So we can focus on this. Now let's start with the first one. The first one is a color that I fell in love with a long time ago. Now I will try to adjust my camera but right now what I see through the viewfinder, turquoises for some reason are problematic for cameras. This looks a lot bluer than it is. Uh, so hopefully I can change it. We'll see. So this is Helio Turquoise. It's actually one of the um, maybe the only really, really vibrant turquoise that I have that is a single pigment, if that is something that is important to you. It's made by Schminke, it's made from PB16, and you can see that it's a very uh, lovely, intense turquoise. For me, in that same box in my palette, I would also include the phthalo uh, turquoises. So this one is from Sennelier and and then uh, Daniel Smith has two colors that are kind of similar. Um, turquoise ultramarine which has ultramarine blue in it and then thalo turquoise which is thalo blue and thalo green and I think that's the most standard formula. Now you can see that these versions are a lot more turquoisey than this one. Um, so you can pick what you like. We'll get into the mixes soon and I kind of made the mixes that I personally enjoy and I find interesting. Um, I don't have strong preferences when it comes to, you know, a slightly greener turquoise, a slightly bluer turquoise. I don't use much these super, super intense staining turquoises anymore. I used to, mm, not so much. I've definitely moved to the cobalt area and yeah it's just a personal preference but if you want a really really strong staining um, turquoise then something like a thalo turquoise or the schminke one uh, would be a great choice uh, the schminke one as i said it's the only single pigment turquoise of its kind that i know let's zoom in a little bit So when it comes to mixes, I it's also what I included. I don't mix a lot of turquoise with blues or greens. I mean, sometimes I do on the painting. I really like to do a lot of mixing, but the ones that I find a lot more interesting are when I mix turquoises with yellows and earth tones surprisingly and then some of the like coral colors in my palette and the reason is so I have here a color wheel <laughs> an educational uh, um, what do you call it accessory whatever so you can see that you know if let's say this is the turquoise one everything that is kind of close to it and the color wheel you can try it, you can test it, you'll get, you know, I'm sure you'll get like really nice mixes and everything, but it's kind of boring and kind of predictable. And what I like is to play around with the colors that are further away on the color wheel. So let's take a look at the yellows. Um, the yellows here, I think because this is a very blue turquoise, 
the greens that we get from the mixtures are actually quite muted compared to all of the other ones. Um, if you're familiar with a little bit of color theory, then, you know, let's say this turquoise is here somewhere and all the other ones are here. So the yellow is closer to these ones in the color wheel and you'll get brighter mixes. That's how it works. The further you go around the color wheel until you're right opposite each other and then you neutralize each other. So the further you go, the muddier your, your mixes get. And actually these are really lovely mixes, especially I really enjoy the ones that are either very close to the yellow or very close to the turquoise. The greens that are kind of in the middle are not my personal thing. This is a mixture with the um, um, Shinhan bright red and you can see that it gives us these muted purples. I think the other mixtures are more interesting because of the granulation. This color is not granulating. And then with, I mixed it a little bit here with uh, ultramarine pink from M. Graham and cobalt violet, my precious, but these are colors, if you do that, if you mix these, like these violet colors with turquoises, you'll get very, very uh, muted purples, but they still are pretty purple. Like not pretty as in beautiful, but you know, as in quite, <laughs> they're still quite purplish. And I don't know, it's just not colors that float my boat. Now, when you get to the earth tones, I think, I think this one is a newer color in my palette that I added. Mm, yeah, so this one I recently bought. It's called Burnt Yellow Ochre, and it's actually a really beautiful color. If you have something, you know, something like um, Venetian Red or even the Brown Oxides, it's kind of in the same lines, the Lunar Red Rock, it's kind of a similar vibe. So you can see this kind of reddish, earthy color. These are lovely mixes and this color really neutralizes the Helio Turquoise and we get some interesting muted, um, yeah, just really muted turquoise color and some fun grays. And then with Lunar Earth, which is a very granulating kind of earthy yellow orange, um, the granulation really does magical stuff and it's just really beautiful. I'll show you a close up when we get to the other one, so you can take a look. And then at the bottom, I mixed it with some dusk pink, which you can see it's a, a pink, a muted pink with black granulation, uh, just because it's a nice dark color. Most of my darks are either something like indigo or black, so there's nothing too uh, surprising about their mixes. I thought adding the pink would be interesting, and you get like an interesting muted, um, purple violet kind of thing. Let's move on to um, this. This is probably the first turquoise I would um, just get rid of. I just don't use it a lot. And um, yeah, I put it in the palette for the spring palette because I wanted to try and get some use out of it. I have uh, a tube that I need to use up. I never really fell in love with it. Moving on to my precious, this is probably, if I had to include only one turquoise in my palette, this would be it. So this is an interesting, um, an interesting color. It has different names, uh, different brands make different versions, and sometimes they use different pigments. Uh, I have a few versions of the PG-50 which is what Sennelier used, they call their version of this color. Um, they call it turquoise green, that's the Sennelier one. Pigment is PG50. Core call it cobalt teal, and I think that's kind of the name that everyone uses because um, also Daniel Smith call theirs cobalt teal blue, again, same pigment. And also Schmincke has the same version um, from the same pigment, which is called cobalt 
turquoise. So if you're getting one of these, make sure you look that you got the pigment right and the name right. They really change from brand to brand. So, but this is kind of, to me, it's a similar, very, very close versions of the same color. So what I have right now in my palette is a full pan that soon will need replenishing. There it is here of Lucas Cobalt Turquoise, I think, I think they call theirs, but it's not made from PG-50. I think it's actually made from PG-36, if I'm not mistaken. But that is the color that I want. It's this really vibrant, light, beautiful um, turquoise color. Now, some brands have kind of cheaper imitations using uh, cheaper pigments. So if you are on a tight budget, uh, that might be worth searching. And that is, you can see Holbein has a color called Horizon Blue. It usually has um, phthalo blue in it and then they whiten it a little bit to get that, um, you know, light and bright color. Uh, Shinhan Pass has a color called uh, Compose Blue, which also gives me the same vibes. They don't perform as well. They don't have the beautiful granulation, which is what I love about this color. So I would only recommend them if... Oh, Old Holland has also uh, a version with phthalo blue. It's called Turquoise Blue Deep. So I would only recommend these if you um, really, really can't uh, afford the the real deal um you know they kind of give a similar effect but i think it's worth to to get the the real cobalt pigments um this is for later and mgram also has a cobalt teal that actually uses pb28 which you might know also as cobalt blue so really each brand has their version. Some are a little bit greener. You can see some are a little bit bluer. I love this color. I love pretty much all of the mixes that you can get with it. Uh, it makes beautiful, beautiful greens. This is with Naples yellow. It's just lovely. You have also these minty colors that you can get. Um, with a azo nickel, with a nickel azo yellow, you can see this is intensely bright and vibrant. This is with Turner's Yellow. Again, beautiful mixes. Uh, here you can see, I'll move you in closer now because it starts to get good. This is with a bright red. You will get similar effects if you mix it with a coral. So you can see the granulation and how the, the turquoise kind of sinks into the paper. Then with the violets, it's just okay for me, but then also when you mix it with the earth colors and these lunar colors from Daniel Smith, you get just this gorgeous uh, separation of the color. Really, really beautiful. Oh, also here, I forgot to mention these. Uh, this is a mixture of buff titanium with the Helio turquoise, and this is a mixture of buff titanium with the um, Lucas Cobalt Turquoise, and I love this mixture also. You get these really, really muddy, murky, minty greens that I think are just beautiful. So the next turquoise that I would probably keep in my palette if I had to, you know, um, trim down <laughs> would be the this kind of turquoise. So it's still mostly a cobalt, um, which just means that the usually the formulation is quite uh, opaque so you might have to use it with a lighter hand although with a with the teals it's not so heavy but this can get heavy and it has a beautiful granulation um, this can sometimes be a little bit more tricky to formulate the cobalt seem to be tricky that way and sometimes can dry sometimes you have a lot of binder to keep them from drying in the tubes but um, Sennelier makes a great version, Schminke makes a great version, and I actually, I think it's safe to say that in the case of certain cobalts, buying a pan is a safer bet than a tube. Uh, I just find the formulation is usually kind of more stable, and the tubes uh, might separate and have more binder in them. So something to uh, take note of and maybe, you know, 
adjust your shopping <laughs> accordingly. So this is the Sennelier, they call it cobalt green. Um, I think most brands have a different color that they would call cobalt green. Schmincke calls theirs, what do they call? I don't know if I have here the sample. Schmincke calls their version um, cobalt turquoise green, I think. And yeah, there it is. Cobalt green turquoise and they use PB36, so the same pigment as this one, and also Sennelier uses uh, PB36. So this, I would say, is a slightly darker, more muted, greenish turquoise or teal. Um, for me, it's a great alternative to Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine, which costs a fortune and the um, uh, it seems from what I've seen online that it also fades to gray in time which I think is just like you know I don't want to pay $30 for a turquoise that turns to gray and I think these really look identical so try and look for the turquoises made with PB36 I really enjoy this color it's I would call it a moody version of the cobalt teal. This is my most used turquoise teal color, hands down, no doubts about it. It's my favorite, but uh, this is a really nice version, especially if you do prefer slightly um, more muted colors. So you can see that all the greens are pretty similar to these, only slightly, they're actually really, really similar, but maybe a little bit more muted. Um, same with pretty much everything. I think the earth tone mixtures are really, really lovely. Look at that. That is beautiful. So yeah, definitely a great color to have. And also I want to say about, um, I mean this color, if you have something like phthalo blue and like a nice uh, primary yellow or lemon yellow, you could mix this color. You could also mix phthalo, um, phthalo, blue, phthalo turquoise if you have phthalo blue and phthalo green in your palette um, or like a lemony yellow. You could mix those but this I don't think it's possible to mix. Correct me if I'm wrong but I think it would be very difficult uh, to mix such a color. Maybe if you had white in your palette and you uh, added that to phthalo turquoise or, or phthalo blue but it doesn't have the same quality and uh, behavior and the the granulation of the cobalts. So the last color it's kind of new to me so I thought it would be just fun to play with it. I added it here to, just a bit to the next to the Helio turquoise. This is from Rembrandt. It's a new color to me. It's called, I said that already, it's called Cerulean Blue Deep. It's made from PB36, the same pigment as this. And you can see it's just bluer. Um, as I said, I have so many blues, I thought I could just include it in this video. And I would say also the mixtures are quite similar to this. Um, it might give you a little bit more versatility because it is slightly bluer. So, you know, it could be like a blue in a primary triad or something like that. Uh, it's still obviously pretty yellow <laughs> for a blue. But yeah, it makes really nice mixtures. It has a beautiful granulation, which is really what, uh, for me, one of the big attractions of these colors. <laughs> this is um, the reminder, the remainder of the, um, the Sennelier Emerald color that I have in my palette. I thought I would include it in this video, but it was just too much and I think I might uh, included actually in a greens video. So let me know in the comments which turquoises are your favorites and if you think you'll pick up anything after seeing this video. I think I've been talking about cobalt teal for eternity so if you've watched me you've probably heard <laughs> heard me talk about it a lot. Um, but yeah I would love to know which ones you enjoy. And 
I wish you a wonderful day. I will ask you again in the um, in a post which colors you want to see next weekend. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what you vote for. Uh, the turquoise won this time. You know, it was almost unanimous, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again soon. Bye.